Welcome back. This is the Eastern Business Reports right here on Afia TV. I am the former Jumobi, reaching you live from Enugu, Nigeria. Irene Zechilo of here, Special Advisor to the Enugu State Government on SME Development and the DG Enugu SME Center joins us now to discuss SME growth and job creation in Enugu. Good morning, Lorenzo. Good to have you here. Good morning, Nisi. How are you doing? How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Welcome to the Eastern Business Reports. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, you have played in the SME sector for a very long time now. I mean, even did some stint with Anambra. SME as well, and in Enugu, um, you've been quite there now with the Enugu SME Center and, you know, doing a lot of work with the SME in um, community. What would you say is their major challenge and what they need most, you know, in order to support their growth? Um, thank you very much again. Um, like you said, um, I started my SME development um, path uh, 2014 when I joined Anambra State Government and subsequently moving to Enugu State. I was one in October 2019, and substantively moving into the agency by January 2020. Um, typically, everybody knows that within the SME ecosystem, one of the biggest constraints for small businesses, micro enterprises, is access to capital um, because of collateral constraints or documentation that they might, um, documentation issues that they might have in accessing these loans. Um, but outside of that, I know everybody knows this is one of the major constraints, but at the agency, we focused entirely on skills. Skills, I believe, is something that should be foundational within the ecosystem space. And then um, we took a radical step in investing in skills across the board. Um, we came up with uh, an initiative called the Human Capital Development Loans, which is a zero-interest loan um, where we provide um, uh, zero interest loans to small businesses, entrepreneurs, and you know everyone that is looking to attain skills um, across board. So both technical skills, vocational skills, and also we also invested in something called a job matching system. We set up something called the Enugu Jobs in partnership with Jobberman, where we help in the whole job matching process and. In, in, in companies coming on that platform, sorry, employers coming on that platform that are seeking job seekers to, um, you know, for whatever skill sets they need, go through a mandatory soft skills training and employability training is mandatory for any job on, uh, upon that platform. Then also, um, the, the employer can also request for the individual that is about to be hired into the company to go through a technical training program across whatever capacity that they might request through some of our private sector training partners. And we provide them with a single digit loan, a zero interest loan to go through that training process as a subsidized rate. Then um, deductions are made over a small period of time from their salaries to repay back these loans. Um, over a three year process, these have been very successful. Um, we've been able to train thousands of individuals across different capacities and also provide jobs to individuals in Enugu State. Oh, that's quite interesting. So um, for the Enugu Jobs, you have a website on how, how does that work? Yes, we have a website, um, enugujobs.com. We initially started off the partnership um, with Jobberman, like I said, that helped us. It's our foremost um, um, job matching platform um, in Enugu State, in Nigeria, sorry. Um, so we partnered with them. First of all, we did um, a data collection program where we first of all tried to understand what, by creating what we call the, the, the job survey, and good state job survey, we were able to identify what were the skills that were lacking and what were the important skill sets that employers also needed to have, because it goes both ways, both the job seekers and employers, to have the requisite skill sets to be able to thrive um, within that ecosystem. So from that, created a platform, matched job seekers to um, employers, and provided training opportunities for those two buckets. That's quite interesting. Then let's look a bit at funding and you know the loan processes. How has that helped you know in, in supporting SMEs in Enugu and what were the number of people who were able to assess these loans? And of course, they, they do repay back. How has the whole process been? Okay, thank you very much. Um, before I come back to the human capital development loans, which are strictly for skill acquisition, 
Um, we also partnered with private sector to provide actual um, um, cash loans for business support for working capital needs as well as for um, asset collection needs. Um, we had a partnership with Fidelity Bank on um, a micro lending program where we provided micro enterprises and small businesses with a maximum of about 500,000 naira at single digit at about 9%. And we're able to provide up to 90 million in funding, and um, our recovery rate so far has been about 85%. And we believe we can still recover a good chunk of those funds. We also had a partnership with the CBN on the Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprise Development Fund. Um, it was a two billion funding um, opportunity. Um, by the time I came in, we were already easing out from that um, loan program. But I can authoritatively tell you that about 700 million of funding went into agriculture, and we've recovered, um, we paid back to the CBM about 1.2 billion. We had another funding program with the Bank of Industry, which was an SME matching program. We've recovered, it was a full, it was a very successful program, 100% repayments. Then we also try to be more innovative, partnering with fintechs. And we had a partnership with Lydia, where we were able to provide revolving working capital for small businesses, market owners, to the tune of, um, I think the maximum lending limit was about 500,000. So at every point when you repay, your lending approvals go up. We're able to do 40 million in loans through that system. And um, we also, are, you know, trying to find innovative ways to continue to provide funding opportunities for the SME ecosystem. And we move back to the human capital development loans, like I mentioned. We've done certified training programs on programming, product design, um, data analytics, cybersecurity. We've also done on auto body work fabrication with um, auto, the partnership auto, with yes, auto, auto is okay. Um, we've done um, construction skills training in partnership with Copen. Construction. Construction skills training okay. yes, in partnership with Copen and Sistrep. We've done um, trainings on corporate law in partnership with um, uh, in partnership with um, Obra Legal, that is um, Justin Alfia's um, legal firm, and a number of these training programs to, um, that has empowered thousands of youths. But the good thing about these opportunities is we also try and provide access to job opportunities through that platform, like I mentioned earlier, the jobs platform. Or also some of these training partners we partner with, we you know, hire, have a mandatory obligation to hire some of these cohorts from their salaries, we get the funds back. We've also done on digital marketing and so much more. All right, that's quite interesting. Now, uh, for the loans, um, uh, let's get back to SMEs. Uh, tell us a bit about the character or the you know caliber of the SMEs who have had access to some of these loans and what did it do for their businesses especially. Now I heard you mention agriculture, so you're talking about farmers, what was the um, what were they into, like what product or particular crop or you know sector of agriculture where they play. So it was across the whole value chain. Okay. It's not uh, um, specific to so you can add uh, individuals playing in packaging, logistics, production. So across the whole value chain, um, we typically try and provide funding opportunities to SMEs, micro enterprises that are economically viable. Um, we try and stay away from businesses within the oil and gas space. Um, but across different sectors, we've been able to provide um, adequate funding programs. This helps to strengthen the ecosystem as well. Then outside of that, I want to also just make a small pivot back to the skills. Um, another thing we try and do is um, we do numerous accelerator and incubation programs for entrepreneurs, which is very important so they can take their, their business ideas to the next level. Um, you hosted the um, 20 to 20 hackathon that we had. Um, we've been trying to do those um, events on a yearly basis. We've had um, what we call the Enigo Skills Action Masterclass, which is um, a... You get um, a professionals, core professionals, call professionals, who have to help experience in those yes, sectors. To like come and help that you. of the fashion, you did that of the fashion? Of course. We yeah. did fashion, corporate law, we've done cybersecurity, we've done um, hardware maintenance, um, we've done solar, um, solar inverter and electrification. We've done, um, we've done a number of them, I think about 10, 15 of them. We try and do this every month. 
and this incubation we also just wrapped up one um, three-day incubation program with Wema Bank for business it was a business accelerator program we had facilitators from um, Naira Metrics there and uh, are you able to measure the impact of all these programs and you know activities in Enugu State so let's maybe talk some numbers and data right now like before all this started i mean it's, it's been on for a while now what have you seen become different especially in job creation and in sme growth um thank you very much for that um, question yes we definitely keep our data um from the from the job creation programs first starting with the training aspects we've trained um over the last three years about five thousand youths um, in terms of the incubation programs and acquisition masterclass programs, that's an additional 4,000 um, over the course of three years. Then from the job creation metrics, uh, first of all, within good jobs, just from job matching, in 18 months, we're able to provide over 2,500 individuals with jobs. We have all the data with the companies they are currently working with. But I think where we'll find a lot of success is yeah, you know, developing entrepreneurs. Um, within our database, we have close to about 20,000 entrepreneurs that we've provided some kind of support to over the years. And um, I can authoritatively tell you in 2021, Enugu State was ranked top five startup states according to the World Bank Startup Blink Report and also top 1,000 globally. Okay, that's quite interesting. Now, when you talk about developing entrepreneurs, what areas have you been looking at and what area is your focus? So, developing entrepreneurs, first of all, you know, a lot of people have ideas, but in taking your business to the next level, knowing the right skill sets to grow your revenue, hiring the right people, understanding your product, um, these are some of the trainings that you get within uh, incubator and accelerator programs. And um, I can also say with the government transitioning with um, the incoming governor, with um, Dr. Peter Bagas, um, he wants to take this to the next level with investments in um, the creative industry, he wants to set up specific hubs across the states that will focus on creative, um, creative industry, um, culinary skills, um, setting up um, um, uh, production facilities for SMEs across the state. So imagine you have uh, uh, what we call an SME um, estate where the government invests in infrastructure, ensuring that it's power within that area. And then as a small business, I, I can just come set up shop, set up my factory. I know there'll be constant power supply here. So some of the um, issues that are mitigants for small businesses to thrive would not affect them again and there will be serious investments in um, as, uh, in agriculture through these special processing uh, special processing economic zones and um, so many more innovations as well and there will be um, there will be a very direct intervention within the digital economy in any good states as well that's very important because i mean there's a lot of um quite that um, the digital space can be managed better, especially in Enugu. And of course, at the age where we are, technology is everything, whereby you've got a lot of um, um, young people getting involved in tech and, you know, if that digital space can also be activated some more, we'll see a lot of um, difference, you know, within the ecosystem. And I, I also saw that you made it to the um, transition committee for Enugu State. Congratulations on okay. that. Thanks what are we to expect from, from you know, that team? Um, as you could see, the makeup of that transition committee, I think about 60 plus individuals that are experts in their chosen fields. Um, you had individuals that are finance experts, even the chairman of the committee, Aichoke, is a foremost investment banker in Nigeria. He's also the chairman of the infrastructure bank that is coming into here. We have a lot of individuals that have core competences across different fields, especially in deal structuring, um, um, different industries. And it's something exciting because it, sh it shows you that the incoming governor has an agenda that he wants to execute and um, he has brought the best minds to ensure that he's... Um, what he calls his, in his manifesto, his promise to the people is executed within four to eight years. 
All right. Now, the role SME plays in any community cannot be overemphasized or overlooked. I mean, they are the major, they are the, they are the bulk of you know, what you have down in every society and community. So what should we be expecting from the Inugo SME Center going forward on, you know, in this area? Um, I can authoritatively say that there will be um, a more focused um, investment into the SME space. Again, access to um, capital for small businesses, business incubation services. There will also be job creation opportunities, like I mentioned. Then also a lot of um, shared services for small businesses, you know, setting up hubs, setting up innovation centers and incubation centers. So our, our entrepreneurs, small businesses know that they can go to these locations and enjoy shared services to ensure that um, the cost constraints in setting up a business is significantly reduced for them. All right. Thank you. Of course, you're going to be our partner on this program. No <laughs> we'll problem. be bringing a lot of um, information to the people on what's happening in the SME sector right here in Enugu State. Thank you very Thank much. you for the insights that you have shared. Thank you for having me. And that was Arinze Chilo Ofia, Special Advisor to the Enugu State Government on SME Development and the DG of the Enugu SME Center on SME Growth and Job Creation in Enugu. This will be all on the Eastern Business Reports. Thank you for joining us today. I am Ifoma Ajumobi. Do have a beautiful day.